Hello, my name is Natasha and I'm a scientist at the Department of Plant Sciences at the University of Cambridge. I find plants absolutely fascinating to study. My research is about how plants make offspring. And today I'm going to tell you a story which is directly related to my research. This is a story about why bananas and some other fruit do not have seeds. If you saw a wild banana plant, you would not want to eat it. As I show in this picture, it has lots of rather large seeds. So how did banana that originally had large seeds lose them and turn into banana that we know and love to eat today? To explain this, I first need to tell you about the science behind how plants propagate and make offspring by seeds. And before I tell you about that, I need to tell you about the DNA, the genetic information that is found inside every cell. So here I schematically show around the cell, the nucleus and the genetic information, the DNA is packed into chromosomes, which I show in green, red and blue. So this cell has six chromosomes, two green, two red and two blue. You can think of them as instruction booklets, which tell the plants how to grow, make its roots, shoots, flowers, fruits, and seeds. Importantly, a plant needs a complete set of these instruction booklets. One missing, and the plant does not know how to properly grow or make its parts. This set of instruction booklets or chromosomes is constant for each species. So when plants make offspring via seed, to keep the set of instruction booklets constant, and not to get them doubling with each generation, plants first divide all their instruction booklets equally between two cells, which become egg and pollen. I'm showing egg and pollen here. And then these two cells come together to make a new plant. So here the parent had six chromosomes, two green, two blue, two red. They divide them into two cells. One becomes egg, one becomes pollen, and each has half the material, half the instruction booklet set, blue, green, red, blue, green, red, three in each. And then when these two come together, the offspring has exactly the same amount of genetic material or chromosomes or instruction booklet as the parent. Two X, we call it diploid, diploid parent two X, and diploid offspring two X. So what happens very rarely is that due to an error during cell division, the number of genetic, the number of chromosomes, the genetic information, the number of instruction booklets is not divided between the two cells. And here I'm showing one cell with six chromosomes and the other one with 12, four green, four blue, four red, instead of two of each. This one with 2x we call, call diploid, and this one with 4x we call tetraploid. And for animals and humans, this is really bad news. But for plants, this is great news, because doubling instruction sets means bigger plants and bigger fruits. And indeed, most of the crops that we use and uh, that surround us today have two, four, six, or eight times the original set of instruction booklets. And here I'm showing you that, for instance, cotton, peanuts, blackberries, and potatoes have 4x, they're called tetraploid. Different species of coffee and strawberries have two, four, six, or up to eight x. Wheat and oats, as hexaploid, have six x and sugarcane is 8x, is octoploid. And this happened to a wild banana many years ago. Its genetic information doubled due to a rare mistake that occurred. And now we had a tetrapoid banana. And then this tetrapoid banana gave rise to a 2x egg with double the genetic information compared to the 1x pollen that came from a normal diploid banana. And then when these two met, when the tetraploid and diploid banana mated, then what end, they ended up producing is a triploid banana, 
which is 3x. So it has nine chromosomes, three green, three red, three blue. And now this triploid banana had to divide its genetic material to pass it on to the next generation to make seed and to make offspring via seed. How can it do it? Well, simply it doesn't work. So I was talking about nine chromosomes and here in the cartoon I'm showing nine chromosomes. This is just for simplicity. But in reality, a triploid banana has 33 chromosomes. And then when it comes to divide 33 into two, it just simply doesn't work to have a full set of instruction booklets or chromosomes. And here I'm showing you six different variants of pollen and egg cells that it could produce. And you can see that none of them has a whole set, a complete set with a complete set of instructions. And so when these come together to produce offspring in an offspring in a you 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 don't get real seeds so what you get you can see here those little black dots so they're little seeds but they didn't develop properly they didn't develop into those large seeds that we saw in the original bananas i showed you at the beginning of the talk because they didn't have a set of genetic instructions or instruction booklets to tell them how to grow So triploid bananas are sterile. They don't make proper seeds. So how do triploid bananas propagate? So the way they propagate is by vegetatively, not through seeds, but through little plantlets called pups or suckers that grow at the base of the main stem. And these little plantlets give rise to new banana plants. So you may ask me, why did 33 not split into 22 plus plus 11, which originally gave rise to those 33. Theoretically, that would be possible, but practically it's so rare that it doesn't happen. It's so rare statistically to divide 33 chromosomes to give a complete set of 22 and a complete set of 11, just as I show here, that, that modern day bananas that are triploid would never have a big seed like that, like I show here in the original banana. So I find this story really fascinating and it's a really nice example of how basic science can feed into applied research. And scientists were so excited when they discovered why bananas do not have seeds that they decided to apply this knowledge, that knowledge that came from basic research, to fruits and to fruits that we commercially consume and we like. And here I'm showing an example of apple, watermelon and grapes. And we all know that we can buy commercial varieties that are seedless. And the mechanism behind them being seedless is that they're triploid. So they have the, the amount of genetic material or instruction booklets that cannot be divided simply into two. And that's why the seeds don't get the instruction how to grow properly and they don't develop and they appear seedless. And this is so exciting because knowing the mechanism that not occurred in nature, scientists could apply it and breed the varieties of fruit that people like to consume to have exactly the same properties in terms of dividing genetic information and not being able to produce big seeds that people don't like to have to find. So I hope you've enjoyed this story and I thank you very much for coming to our virtual festival of plants and for your attention. Bye bye.